All right. Well, once again, good morning, everyone. This is Brian. We're also here with Forex Joe. And today is Tuesday, February 25th. We're here for Forex Live. And we're going to be trading live in the markets using the, uh, the principles from Forex Joe. We'll be using a couple of things. So I want to make sure we have open a trading terminal. Number one is our, our MT4 trading terminal. And we should have our Forex Trader tools attached to that. Uh, we also need to have a, uh, a copy of our, here it is, our daily regimen for live trading open. This is what we'll be following along. This is the checklist that we'll be using as we enter the market. Checklist gives us a standardized approach to exactly how we enter the market every day. Uh, consistency is key so that we can, um, you know, uh, if, we're, if we have a consistent approach, then obviously we can we can, uh, you know, take it and tweak it if we're seeing opportunities. If we're just, you know, willy-nilly firing at uh, whatever's out there, then there's no consistency and there's no way for us to make any kind of adjustments to get better, right? So we need a consistent approach. This is what provides it. Also serves as a, a way to keep your finger off the button so you're not too impulsive, and it can serve as our uh, trading log for us. Uh, so we need to have that open. Then we'll also be using the daily report which is here. Forex Show puts this out every night on 22 currency pairs. And we'll be using this to uh, define our channel tops, channel bottoms, and support resistance information. So we need to have those three things open. Um, also, we need to have a news source open. We've got an overzealous bird that just flew over here. We uh, need to have our news source open so we can see what potential pitfalls might be coming up for us. And then finally, we'll be using finviz.com, which is our future site, it gives us an opportunity to uh, see what's going on in the futures market and kind of get an understanding of where dollar strength or dollar weakness might be. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. Um, before we jump too far into things, I need to let you know that unique experiences and past performances do not guarantee future results. Uh, we're all big boys and big girls here. We know that. We know that trading involves risk. We know that we shouldn't be using money that uh, we can't afford to lose. Um, honestly, it, it kind of pisses me off that we have to put this up every class because I feel like uh, people should be responsible for their for their own destinies and should be responsible for their own actions. But obviously, we some people aren't, which is why lawyers created the necessity for a disclaimer before anything that we do. <laughs> so uh, here we here we have it. Uh, so read through that, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. That should be long enough. I know you guys all have that memorized. So what are we going to do today? Well, again, we're walking through Forex Joe's methodology, so we need to have open our, uh, our checklist. So hopefully you've printed that out or you've got one on your screen that you can work through and uh, keep maybe an electronic record. However you choose to do it, there is no, no uh, wrong answer to it as long as you're using a consistent approach. That's the key there. So we're going to start things off. We're going to start with the Euro USD, and I'll go through it step by step. We'll go kind of slow and talk about it. It might take me 10 minutes or so to get through the first one. Then we'll do the, the pound USD. We'll go a little bit faster there, and then we'll do the US yen at the end, kind of do that full speed. Ultimately, it shouldn't take you more than about 15 minutes total in the markets to use this trading strategy. All we need is, is just it's about 15 minutes, that daily report, some other information, we can walk through it quickly, uh, gather the information, make some educated trading decisions, place our trades, and then we can go about our business and do whatever it is that we need to do for the, for the remainder of the day. Um, I mean, if you choose to scalp, we obviously would keep using this over and over and over, kind of the same methodology to find levels to, to scalp from. But if we're, if we're being more of an intraday trader, uh, you know, more of a day type trader, we're just going to place a couple of trades. We can do this once and walk away, which is awesome. It's incredible. All right, so Euro USD current price is, and if we're using the uh, the 21st Century Forex Trader tools, our current price is right down here, uh, displayed for us at the bottom. So we know that current price on the Euro USD is 37.55. All right, 37.55. So our first stop, once we get current price, is over to our daily report, and we're going to pull up our channel information which is right here on our daily report. And we see that we have a channel top at 37.52, and we have a channel bottom at 37.28. Now, what's the first thing you notice about those numbers? Well, you're probably noticing that 37.28 is a short-term 
and a midterm channel. So this is a two of three channel here at 3728. That's telling us that 3728 is a fairly heavy level of support for us. Now, three of three channel gets even heavier, but right now, two of three channel, pretty darn heavy level of support at 3728. So we want to put a little star by that number because if we do get down there, that's going to be a big number for us. Of course, the channel top, 3752, there's no real, no real alignment there. Um, we do have it up here at 4184. If we break through this, um, looks like there's not a lot between here and 4184 as far as larger channels for us to pick up on. Obviously, there's going to be channels within there, but the next big number, 4184, is a two of three channel up there. So we're concerned today with 3752 and 3728. All right, so we've gathered that. What's our support and resistance information? Well, we can go right down here. We know that we're trading at 3755. Uh, so what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that above us we have 3769 if we, if we continue up, followed by 3782. And if we break to the downside, we've got 3739, followed by 3728. So again, adding a little extra level of support there to that, uh, that channel bottom. So 3728, again, pretty darn significant for us. All right, next up. We're going to go over to our charts and find out, are we trending or are we oscillating? <laughs> uh, that bird's cracking me up. He landed like right next to me, and he's just uh, talking away. He probably doesn't like me sitting here. He's like, dude, what are you doing? You need to be inside doing that work. Anyway, um, trending or oscillating? Are we trending or oscillating today? And I think we can all agree just based on the, the pattern we're in a bit of a, of a trend. Looks like we're, we're smoothly trending up. But the next question that we'll want to ask ourselves is, has the channel been broken? Have we broken above 3752 or below 3728? And that's the big, the big question. The answer there is yes. We know we have because we're currently trading at 3755. So yes, 3752, we, we came to it, we broke it, we, uh, we immediately repelled came back and saw that level as resistance, resistance, and now we've broken it and we've closed above it for a couple of candles now. So has the channel been broken? Yes, it has. The channel has been broken. All right, but next up, what's our average daily range? Well, today, even though this looks like a little bit of a trend, we've only moved 34 pips for the day. That's, that's not many at all when we look at what this, this pair currently typically moves. So we've moved 37 pips. 130-day um, range is about 60, you know, we're 56 to 60 pips on that 130-day range. Um, we know that under regular market conditions, and again, this is, this is kind of the baffling piece, right? I think a lot of us are kind of baffled by this, is, you know, for, for years prior, uh, this pair moved in about 100 pip range. And now all of a sudden, end of, you know, middle of last year, we came into summertime blues, which is expected to have that consolidation occur but it never came out of it. We've stayed in that 60, 70 pip range. I mean, it's had some days that are 100, 120 plus, but typically it's staying in a very tight range like we're seeing today, which um, you know makes for great conditions. And Forex Show actually typed it in earlier, uh, great conditions for scalpers or range traders. I mean, it's, it's been, uh, been a, a great opportunity, it looks like. So um, anyway, average range, about 60 pips. We know on the outside it's about 100. Um, but average here lately has been about 60 pips. Uh, next up, is there any news? Well, let's pop over to the Forex Factory. And you could use Bloomberg. You might use FX Street. It's totally up to you. Just need a news source to know when the high impact reports are coming out. Uh, we're not news traders, so we're using this to figure out when is news occurring so that we can stay out of the market. But let's be smart about it. We don't want to be in the middle of a trade um, or entering a new trade, let's say, right in the face of news. Maybe you see what looks like the perfect setup, but you know, it's five minutes to news or 10 minutes to news. Eh, probably not really the perfect setup because you know, that, that, that news release, if it's, if it's a high impact release, could cause you know, some whip in the market. It could cause you know, a total directional change. So better off just not being in there, let the news occur, wait you know, 15, 20 minutes after news, and then we can look to place some trades. So with that said, news coming up, uh, it's uh, 9, 9, 10 right now. We have 10 o'clock news for the uh, Consumer Confidence Report is coming out. That's a high-impact report. So news 
yes, there is news at 10 a.m. So it gives us some time. We might be able to find some trades that we can put on now. And then, you know, we, if they don't trigger, then we will want to take those off prior to news. If they do trigger, well, let's see where we are. If we're into profit, we may just shut it down and, and uh, take our profits. Uh, let's see what happens. But uh, for now, we know that there is news at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then finally, uh, what's happening in the futures market. Let's record this before we place our trades. And uh, this has been kind of a head scratcher too here as of late. Um, again, typically futures market moves inverse of the US dollar. Typically, as we see money flow out of the futures, it flows into the dollar. And then conversely, as it flows out of the dollar, it flows into the futures market. We've seen this being uh, kind of mixed up for this year as well, uh, especially since January. It's just been not making any sense at all. Uh, or at least not, I shouldn't say not making any sense, but it's not following the general rules, which again, it just tells us to be cautious, be careful when you're seeing things disconnect and not acting the way that they normally act. It's, it's usually a recipe for, uh, you know, maybe something major that's about to come. And, you know, we just want to be careful and be cognizant of that, cognizant of that when we're trading and not take any unnecessary risks. So with that said, right now, you know, we're seeing... Dow's down, S&P's down, crude's down, gold and silver are down. Uh, that should lead us to a positive U.S. dollar. That should lead us to dollar strength. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens for the day. It's a, it's a very mixed futures market site. If we, if we scroll down here, I mean, how often do you see that where it's the whole thing is just almost level? That's, uh, that, that's kind of unheard of. So uh, really, really odd futures market right now. Let's... Um, We'll give it some time. The, the floor traders come on, you know, here in about uh, 20 minutes or so, and maybe we'll get some directionality out of this. But right now, it's a very mixed futures market, so we'll just be careful. All right, so we gathered a ton of information. We got our, our channel tops, our channel bottoms, our support resistance information. We know that we are in a slight trend. We know that we have broken our channel, and we know that we've only moved 34 out of an average of 60 pips. Uh, as of as of late, and we do have news here in about an hour. So what are we going to do? We've kept our finger off the button. We've gathered our data. Now what? Well, now let's look to, to place some trades. Well, what do we have? We've got a channel top here at 37.52. Uh, normally, I would draw a line, but there's no need since we have our, our thermal grid right there identifying that, uh, that level for us. So we've got our thermal grid here, 37.52. Now we've broken above it. We're coming back. We're retesting it. This looks like it might be a nice spot to park a, park a little buy uh, right here. We've also got 37.28. Uh, this is a big level for us as well, 37.28 is. What else do we have between there? Let's consolidate our channels just a bit. And we've got 37.39. Let's put that on here as well. It's about right here. 37.30, come on. 37.39, right about there. Okay. So 37.39, 37.28, 37.52. These are really the areas that we're, we're most concerned with right now. Uh, channel bottom, channel top. Very, very tight range right now on this, on this currency pair. Uh, looks like we've got a lot of momentum that's kind of bringing us through 37.52 right now. So where do we want to be? Well, let's let this candle close. We've only got about 20 seconds more on it. Let's let it close and see where it closes. If it closes below, we'll wait for another candle to close below this. And if that second candle closes below, then we're going to sell it here on a retest of 37.52. Depending on what this next candle does after this one, then uh, you know we'll have to we'll have to wait and see what what's, what's going to happen there. So 37.52. So that we we close below on this 15-minute candle. Uh, we know we have a level of, of resistance here. This is our, our channel top. We're in a slight upward trend, but we've closed below this. Now, this next candle is kind of crucial for us. If this next candle closes below, then we're going to come up here and we're going to park a sell at a retest of this level. So it closes below, it kind of gives us a sense of direction. We'll come, come back here and park a sell. If it closes above, then we'll park a buy um, right here and, and buy it on a retest of that. So... Uh, We'll wait for that to occur. 37.28, big level. So in the meantime, I don't know if we'll get there before news. Um, you know, obviously the no-brainer here. Uh, where's my byline? Oh, it's hiding out behind my sell stop loss. 
uh, kind of the no-brainer trade for us based on Forex Joe's methodology is to park a buy here at 3728. This is a two of three channel and it's also a, a support level for us. So with those three things or those two things working for us, if we're able to pull back to this level, then we would look to buy it off of 3728. Now again, do I think it's going to get there in the next 40 minutes? No, I, I don't. We'll, we'll park it just so we've got it, but this may be a trade that we, we wait for news. You know, we'll, we'll put it on, we'll wait for news to occur, and then uh, you know, see if we can pull back to that level and then take a trade after that from 3728. Uh, so uh, great, great level, you know, good looking level, great spot to buy from, but where's my stop loss? It must be hiding out too. Aha, it is, it was hiding. See that? Hiding from me. All right, so we've got about nine pips on the stop. We've got about uh, 10 pips, 11 pips on our take profit one, about the same on take profit two. So that's a trade we'll go ahead and put on. That's a that's pretty solid. We're, we're using a significant level down there, 37.28, two of three channel to park a buy. Now again, from an intraday perspective, do I think it's gonna get there right away? No, I don't. I, this is gonna be a little bit longer term, and uh, but to park a trade right now, this is the one I would choose. Um, otherwise, we really need to wait for kind of what's happening here. We need to wait for this to, to finish. Uh, need to see what our next candle is doing. And uh, by that time, you know, as we as we finish those uh, this, this next piece, we'll be getting too close to news to place a trade anyway. So we'll really just be watching kind of this level and this level post news to see where we're going to place our next trade. So again, uh, 37.52. If we continue below, we're going to we're going to sell it on a retest here. If we break back above, we're going to buy it on a retest here. It's pretty simple. You've got a, a major level. There are only 30 pips for the day, top to bottom. We know it's got some room to move, um, you know, one way or the other. We just need to wait for the right opportunity to enter, you know. So we don't just willy-nilly, um, I think uh, Joel said it nicely today, we don't just stomp through the forest taking shots. We like to uh, let things set up and, and uh you know, take the take the shot that has the most opportunity for success. So, um, you know, we're going to wait this one out. So we've got one trade we can put on now, which is this one, and then we'll we'll wait and see what we can do after news, which will be after class. But I'll record a uh, a class follow up video for what we're doing there. All right, next up, pound USD. So we'll do this once again, same exercise. It's consistent, right? It's. Uh, it's almost kind of boring, and it should be. We need to be consistent, have a methodical approach. If we're if we're getting too excited about it, then we're we're not doing it right. It should not be an exciting thing to put on a trade. It should be methodical and a business transaction. So here we are. 6711 is our uh, our next is our current price on the pound dollar. And where are we from channel perspective? Well, let's see. Channel information survey says. We have a channel top at 67.11, and we have a channel bottom at 66.16. Uh, for the day, nothing really lining up that, that is a concern to us, so good to go there. No channel top, channel bottom to worry about. Um, that's a two of three or three of three channel. Uh, support resistance, what do we have? Well, down below us, we have support at 6,700. That's going to be a big number. These whole numbers are always going to be a big number for us. Price typically likes to stop, stall out there, and, and sometimes test that again before it before it moves. So your whole numbers are always going to be a decision point. You know, 6,700, 6,750, 6,800, always going to be uh, levels to, to keep an eye on where price typically is going to stall or, or maybe even reverse. You don't know, but it's a good spot to look for you know, potential uh, potential reversals. Uh, if we break down below that, we've got 66.61. Uh, to the upside here, we break through 67.11, we've got 67.22, followed by 67.84. All right, and then if we break through 66.61, we've got 66.30. Just go ahead and capture all those. All right, are we trending or oscillating for the day? Well, again, looks like we're in a, in a bit of an upward trend. So we are trending up for the day. So we're trending up. Uh, has the channel been broken, though? Have we broken below 66.16 or above 67.11? 
And uh, the answer there is, yeah, we, we, we pierced it, rejected it. We're coming back. We're testing it again. We need to see what happens here with this candle. But it certainly is struggling at 67.11. We're struggling up there. Uh, how many pips have we moved? Well, today we've moved 72 pips, and our average range is about 70 to 80 pips on this one. We're about 70 pips right now, 130-day range. Now, again, uh, just like the euro, this pair was moving in 100 to 110 pip range prior to the uh, middle of the year, and then things just went kind of wacky on us, and uh, we've never gotten back into a, a, a nice, nicely trending market. Uh, does that mean it will always be here oscillating? No, markets are eventually going to move, but uh, when? You know, we just have to be prepared for that. So we, we know that we're currently, on average, moving about 70, 70 so pips. But again, we've had days of 100 plus, and our, our average range prior to this was about 100 to 110 pips. So let's just keep that in mind as well. Um, is there any news coming up? Yeah, we know that there's news at 10. What's the futures market doing? It won't have changed too much in the last couple of minutes. It's a, a mixed bag right now. So um, what are we going to do on this one? Well, we're looking to see where we can trade from. So 67.11 obviously is going to be a decision point for us. It has been already this morning. It's, it's moved to that level and rejected it once. It's there again. Uh, we need to see where this candle closes. Is it going to reject this again or is it going to break on through? So we need to see if it breaks through, then we want to watch another candle close above and then we'll buy it on a retest. If it uh, can't break through there, then obviously we'll look to sell. Now, obviously, buying here would be a very dangerous proposition for us because we've already moved 72 pips, and it's an average daily range of about 70 pips. So is this a great spot to look for a buy? Even if it does break through here, a candle closes above, and we buy it here, how many pips can we really expect reasonably? You know, Reasonably, on average, it's not moving more than about 70 pips, and it's already done that. So... Again, is this a great spot? Even if it does give us a buy setup, is this a great spot to look for a buy? In my opinion, no. I'd rather see it pull back a bit more and then look for an opportunity. So, you know, I'd be more inclined to watch 6,700 because we have. We've moved to it. We repelled off of it. We moved to it, repelled off of it, broke through it, and we haven't retested 6,700. So um, 6,700 would be a little better level, in my opinion, of where we'd want to uh, – to look for potential opportunity there. So, you know, for me, I'd, if I were forced to, to look for a buy on this one, I'd, I'd look for it here based on where the trend is. I'd even like to see it pull back a little bit more, knowing that there's news coming up uh, here in half an hour. It may even be able to pull back and retest this, uh, this Asia high before it moves on, which is um, a, more of a preferred trade for me. Um, I, I like that trade. I think I've mentioned to you guys before, one of the best setups that I see that works consistently. Does it work every time? No, but pretty darn consistent for getting pips is when, you know, during the, the London session, if we've, you know, broken above or, or broken below, we'll talk about above in this case, if we've broken above the Asia high by, you know, anywhere from 50 to 20 pips or, or more, and it pulls back, um, typically I like to buy it off of the Asia high. If we've broken above it, we pull back, I'll, I'll park a buy here all day long, and it's, it's usually good for, you know, the seven, eight pips on take profit one, and, you know, a lot of times it continues to run after that, but pretty darn consistent trade, and same down here for the Asia low, same thing, you know, if we're breaking down below here, and uh, we're coming back during the U.S. session or just before, great spot to look for a sell off of that. Now, you know, of course, we've seen that, we've seen that trade being, you know, put on in class, I've, I've used that, uh, that set up for you before in class when it uh, when it's given us an opportunity uh, to do that. Right now, I'm not I'm not seeing it right this second. So you know, for a shorter term, you know, if we're able to pull back prior to news, I'd look for a buy here at uh, at 6,700. That would be my my area to watch. Would be here now. Of course, you know, with news coming up, we really need to wait for that news to occur and see what happens there. So you know, this we'll put this trade on, and then we'll we'll take it off if uh, you know prior to news, and then see what uh, what transpires with the news and what the overall direction is at that point. Here's my line hiding out, hiding out under the sell lines there. All right, so where would I look for a sell? Well, you know, knowing that we've we've moved this far already, you know, we've got uh, 67. 
22 followed by 6784 way up there uh, you know 6736 is kind of our next thermal grid up here you know for moving top to bottom if we get here we're about 90 pips which is really exceeding what our range would typically be so looking at a, a next major level you know for me for a move both of those looking at a potential sell just to bracket this in I would be looking to sell off of this 3736 area up here keeping my stop pretty tight and then looking to uh, take profit quickly as well on it just to see if we could grab a few pips on a uh, on a bounce there which is counter trend so that's why I'm not looking to really extend anything out I mean it's counter trend so we're looking here if we can pull back to 6700 big hole number we've tested it tested it broke it we haven't retested it which is why I like the like this area for a buy um, if it breaks through there you know I would like this this next area down here for a buy as well but um, we'll we'll park it here for right now and then wait we'll take it off if it doesn't if it doesn't snap in prior to news we'll take it off and then uh, after news occurs we'll watch you know kind of this this range in here and see where we are and see if we can take a trade so but for now um, I'll look here to park it and I'll look for my sell up here uh, because that's you know that's really if we we'd be really extending our our average range from where it has been if we can push to this area it is a, a, a decent level of, of resistance for us so I'm happy to, to park that uh, that buy and sell right there now if you guys have questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing it please type them in and that's the purpose of this class is to you know provide some education and let you guys ask questions about the methodology Forex Joe is on with us right now so he can answer your questions as well if you have swing trading questions or you know additional questions about how the how the method works so let's do it one more time uh, we'll do it on the US yen and then I'll turn it over to Forex Joe and we'll go a lot faster on this one just to kind of go in real time for what we would be doing to place this trade so USD JPY currently trading at 102 32 and the daily report says 10206 for the bottom 10258 for the top and 10241 10223 10206 which is equal to the bottom and 10260 for resistance up there, followed by 10278. And that 10260 is in line with that 10258. All right, trending or oscillating. Looks like we're in a bit of a downward trend. Downward trend. Has the channel been broken? Have you broken below 10206? Nope. Above 10258? Nah. So channel has not been broken. Average range, 40 pips. Uh, today we've moved 40 pips. Average is about 60, 55, 60 pips. And again, we knew this was in the 80 to 100 range prior to the prior to the uh, middle of, of last year. Uh, futures market, eh, just coming online right now. Won't have uh, changed too much in the last 15 minutes. So we'll just keep an eye out there. We need to give that some time for these guys, the floor traders, to really get going and uh, see what they're going to do. So, all right, where are we going to place trades? Well, the uh, couple of opportunities here, 10206 is a channel bottom. You know, if we can get there, let's see. Top to bottom from this to here, 10206 is about 56 pips, which is right in line with what our 130-day average is. Uh, so barring any any crazy news, we would look to buy it off of this level. Let's just get that set down here. Again, we'll keep our stop fairly tight. We'll keep our profit taking tight as well. So we'll look to buy off of this level right down here. And we're good to go. And then as far as the sell goes, we really need to see, you know, what, what really transpires from this, uh, from this news event that's coming up here in about 30 minutes. Um, obviously, right now, this uh, 102.30 is kind of a decision point for us. We've, we've come down. We saw support here. 
we broke it, we're, we've come back, we're just kind of hovering in this, you know, 102.30 to 102.35 range. So we need to see what's happening here, um, and I think that'll be largely news driven. We, we may not see any real movement until post news. So let's wait for news to occur and then see what we're going to do there with uh, with placing a trade on this uh, on this U.S. yen. All right, so uh, we got those trades on. I don't know why that's not activating. Weird, invalid price parameter. Let's try that again. One hundred two hundred six, right here. Move our stop loss down. Get our take profit. And get our take profit here. Move to buy. There we go. All right. Well, what is up? Invalid price parameter. I don't understand what's happening. Well, we'll have to uh, have to figure out what's happening there and get that uh, get that sorted out. But ultimately, we're looking at 102.06. So we'll we'll record a, a video at the end of the day just to recap what trades we've put on, see how those performed, and then see how we trade uh, post news to give you uh, some additional education there. So with that said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Forex Joe and uh, I'll let him run through what he's seeing in the marketplace today and answer any questions you guys might have. And of course. You know, um, we should always be coming prepared. If you've got questions, ask them. That's the only way to learn is to ask questions of, of you know, what Forrest is doing, how he developed the methodology, why he does things a certain way. The only way you're going to understand it is to, to ask those questions if you want to become a self-sufficient trader. So uh, with that said, let's turn it over to Forex Joe and uh, go from there. Okay, good morning, Brian. Uh, folks, we're still in kind of a holding pattern for those of you that are swing traders. I did a quick uh, survey just sitting here because uh, this is kind of reminding me of the summertime blues but I went back and, and kind of did some research because of what's transpired here in February first of all February is only 28 days it's the shortest day of the month and lo and behold you wouldn't guess what the top three months are as far as being the slowest months for Forex February July and August now we all know July and August kind of coincides with the summertime blues and you get range bound markets as far as breakouts. Waiting for breakouts because most of the traders, big traders take off after July. But with February only being 28 days and usually every February, this is what I'm caught up in, I'm kind of updating numbers and doing my yearly number crunching uh, exercises. It takes me four to six weeks to do everything with everything that I've added as far as the system, would you believe that if you took the four majors, the euro dollar, the pound dollar, the U.S. Swissy, and the U.S. yen, that's take the last five sessions, you add them all together, that's a total of 20 sessions. There's only been one 100 pip mover of the four majors. Now if you go back and you kind of put this in perspective for the last 10 sessions, then you're looking at a total of the last 10 sessions, the euro happening back on Thursday, February 13th, it moved 106 pips. It's only done it three times in the last 20 sessions. So in the last month, the euro dollar has only moved 100 plus pips in a session three times. Now, if you are a scalper or a day trader, you are happier than a tick on a hound dog because you are getting range bound moves but during that period of time we actually came from uh, a range that stays within this range and we just keep bumping into strong resistance near 138 in fact I think the highest has been right around 3770 3775 area so watching those numbers anytime it gets near that area and it's happened uh, you know, just a couple of times here in the last five sessions, then you automatically play the reversal, but you have to lower your take profit one, lower your take profit two, and anticipate 
getting in and out as scalping or day trading. Now, if you're a swing trader, you're not really getting too excited for three times in the last 20 sessions now. It's happened with the euro US dollar. Well, let's keep doing our little research here because when you get frustrated swing trading and you feel yourself to say, I have to be trading, I have to be trading, I have to be trading, this is what you need to do. It's a little bit more advanced when you get to the pound dollar. Now, the pound dollar is tied to the pound yen. So if you take a look, the last 20 sessions for the pound dollar, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, and the last 20 have been 100 plus pips. But still not anything to get excited about because you're still looking at about 33%, right at 35%. So 35% of the time, that's not exactly something to get excited about. When you go to the U.S. Swissy, it's happened one time one time. And when you go to the US Yen, it's happened three times. Three times. So when you put this in perspective, the last five sessions for the four majors that adds up to 20 overall sessions, you've had one 100 pip mover. When you take a look for the entire month and even going back into the last three days are trading sessions, the 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st, actually four days of January. Guess what, sports fans? If you're sitting here looking to get multiple pips, 100 pip movers in the four majors, then you better be Nostradamus and you better be working hard because you've only got 14 times. 14 times in the last 80 sessions, you have the four majors times 20, that's 80 sessions. You have 14 times in the last 80 sessions that it's moved 100 plus pips. You know how many times it's moved 200 pips? Zero. So anytime you get frustrated, all you have to do, and this is one of the reasons why I created the daily report for the last 20 sessions is so you can see especially what's happening in the last five sessions. If you're a swing trader, you can look at the last 20 sessions, but if you're a day or scalper, you can look at the last five se sessions and get your ranges. Now what I did when I put out the report over the weekend is I give you ranges of certain pairs. I give you ranges of what happened last week with the top, what, six pairs? And there was only uh, not much happening there. But we're going to see some breakouts before too long. We're starting to see some areas. You're starting to see some news that's going to be forthcoming that's going to cause this. If we don't see it this week, what do we have next week? We have the next round of the Bank of England, the ECB, and non-farm payroll. I'll also give you ranges for like two, four, six, seven pairs and of the seven pairs, I think three of the pairs were like the Euro, Yen, Aussie, Yen, Pound, Aussie. Some of these pairs that were getting ready to move. But when you take a look at this, this is allows you that if you're only trading the four majors, you don't get too excited because there's not much happening. On the other end of the, the spectrum, one of the reasons that I give you the Pound Aussie to look at over the weekend was here on Monday, the Pound Aussie was the big mover of the week, of the day. Excuse me, not, well, the week's only been one session going into today. But for Monday report, the Pound Aussie moved 210 overall pips minus 78. And I give you the range of 86.50 to 84.50 as the range of what's happening in the pound Aussie. Where did it close at? 84.19 after it dipped below the 84.50 area. So pay attention to what's given out in the reports. If you're going to trade these exotics, make sure you're doing it in a practice regimen account. We're getting a lot of people from the Bank of England talking about issues that's going to be coming. We're getting a lot of people in the ECB that's starting to have 
giving us a kind of a clue. They're talking about when possible rate changes are coming, uh, whether there's going to be more quantitative easing. Uh, we're going to see a break in the weather here in the U.S. Most all the bad numbers have been blamed on the bad weather in the U.S. I don't believe it. It's a factor, yes, but it's not an overall factor. I just think you're seeing a situation where this Ten is years of bad weather around the world. <laughs> And this just continues to, to, to take place. So right now the opportunities are for interday traders, scalpers and day traders. You are in heaven. February has been, you know, like July and August, like the summertime blues. I don't see this scenario changing quite yet, but we could continue to get some pairs that are forming. Now, one of the areas when I started doing the, uh, and I need to explain this, when I started doing the roller derby alerts and the round table is I hadn't traded some of these pairs like the Euro Aussie, Pound Aussie, and some of these pairs consistently in a while. So I've been testing them, been doing some pairs, and I've thrown some, some trades out there, and luckily we've hit some of those trades. The key is that it, now that we're getting more and more information about this, we might have to take a look at trading some of those pairs, but then just as the pendulum gets ready to swing, You'll start seeing the euro, the pound, the yen, some of these other pairs that will start moving 100, 150 pips, and we'll have some of these moves before too long. The key is just being patient, understand what your range ranges are. As Brian talked about today, you could be at the end of the buffet line for some of these pairs. The other day, uh, Brian placed trades uh, from the last class. These trades kicked in. There was pips to be had, there was pips that was generated, and just stay the course. And then if you have any questions, send in questions. I just answered about four questions that were sent in by what I just shared. So I won't go through each one of the questions, but whoever answered all the or asked all the questions, I answered about four of the questions of the questions that was set in. Now the U.S. is right in the middle of coming in with some more bad weather. There's some cold weather north of us. Uh, cold weather it's going to be in the Midwest is kind of going to miss where I'm at. It's not going to be quite as bad. It's going to get down near freezing. But we've got March 4th coming. We've got baseball players reporting to spring training, so baseball's back. Um, summer, or excuse me, spring's right around the corner. So get ready, stay patient, and understand that when you have these ebb and flow in the markets, the markets, and I use this term a lot, the markets is what it is. There isn't anything that any of us could do to change them. There isn't anything that we can do to, to make this break out of these doldrums. And let me give you these numbers once again just so you understand. You know, sear this in your mind. The four majors, the last five sessions, and I'll put this in the chat, that's 20 sessions overall. We've had one 100 pip mover. Interesting. If you take the four majors and the last 20 sessions, which covers a month of trading. That's 80 sessions. We've had 14, 14 of the 80 sessions have moved 100 plus pips overall. That doesn't mean that we've had them close 100 plus pips, okay? That's what we're really looking for when we're looking for trendy markets. We're looking for 100 pip movers, but we're looking for them to close 100 pips. So if you even want to further that, let me do a quick map and let's see how many pairs of the 20 sessions have closed over 100 pips. That would be one on the Euro US dollar. That would be a rousing two in the pound dollar. That would be a rousing zero in the U.S. Swissy, and that would be a fantastic one in the U.S. Yen. So of these 14 times that they've moved 100 plus pips, you only have four pairs, four out of 80, that have opened and closed 100 pips during one session in the last month. That puts everything in perspective. This is why I created all the charts that I did so you could have a calm, you could have the information at your fingertips. You wouldn't have to go out and look for all this information. It's right there for you to use 
and say, it is what it is. It doesn't matter what I do. I better be practicing, and I better be getting ready. I better be knowing my ranges, and I better be rooting, get the pom-poms out. We're rooting for either a break above 138, or we're rooting for a break below 137, and we'll see if we can't break 3650 and get back down to the 3529 area. That's what we're doing with the Euro US dollar. It's that simple. Otherwise, we're range bound, and when you're range bound, you're trading oscillators. And when you're trading oscillators, you're staying within a range. But what are the rules of engagement in trading oscillators? We're going to be wrong once because it's going to break out of that range, and it's going to create a new range. But those of you that have been trading in this ranges of, of late, have been rewarded even though there hasn't been many pips. So you have to understand the lower your take profit one, lower your take profit two. I know some of you uh, were saying that you were taking profit one, take profit two at five to eight pips, and take profit two at eight to ten pips. Well, if you're doing that, let's just put it at a scenario to where you're doing it at eight to ten pips. Take profit one at eight, take profit two and three at ten. Well, that's 28 pips. What are you risking to get that? You may be risking ten pips. So it's a, almost a one-to-one. -one. That's what you want to do when you're scalping. You're risking one-to-one. -one. There isn't anything wrong with that. But just make sure you stay within the parameters. You understand what you're doing. If you don't understand, come to class, ask questions, and we will stay the course. So I'll hand it back over to you, Brian. I don't see any questions. But once you put this in perspective and you understand these numbers and you see what I've just told you uh, or shared with you, it brings a whole new perspective of what's been going on here for the last month. It's been a whole bunch of watching paint dry is the analogy that I use. So I'm not going to force us to try to get our 200 pips for this month. We generated, what did we generate for last month with the roller derby alerts? 1,300 pips. Right now we only got 96 pips for the month. If I see something here in the next couple of days, then I'll put it out if something shows up. If not, we'll get ready for next month, and all we'll do is carry over the 1,300 and some pips that we have. But we didn't take a loss this month. We're still positive. And I was able to do my work in some of the other pairs. I, I shared some pairs with you, what the pound Swissy, the Euro Aussie, the U.S. CAD, that if some of you followed those in the practice regimen account, you were able to generate your 200 pips. Well, we're not counting those. The only ones we're going to count are the roller derby alerts. So you got the best of both worlds. You got extra trades that help you generate your 200 plus pips if you were following the game plan. You also had an opportunity to see all the other trades. You were also had the opportunity to see what Brian's doing that's generated a positive for the month. But we're not counting all those. The only ones we're doing are the roller derby alerts like I did last year. And that's what we're doing and stay in the course. So you're getting the benefits of not only learning, but understanding the markets, understanding when to range bound, how to trade range bound, how to scalp, how to day trade, how if you want to be a swing position trader, how you have to be patient, you can't force anything. And when it does open up, this is why you scale back in and have continuation trades, because it gives you an ample opportunity to generate even more pips. But right now, if you do not have your goal of lowering take profit one and take profit two and getting in and out of these markets, you're not following the game plan because this is all that the markets are giving you. And I've given you the stats at your fingertips. All you had to do was take a look at what I've just shared with you. And all the stats that you need are right there in front of you, and it's being generated each and every day in the report for those of you that are paying attention. Back over to you, Brian. All right. Thank you very much, Forex Joe. Well, guys, let's go ahead and wrap it up. We've got news coming out here in about 10 minutes. We'll wait for news to occur and then uh, see where, where we placed our trades. Obviously, uh, like here on the EURUSD, we, we've now broken above 37.55, and uh, we'd be looking here for a potential retest depending on what news happens and uh, what, what comes out there. So we'll record a video um, this afternoon after everything has settled down, see where our trades kicked in, see what happened, and then... Um, We'll, we'll be back in class on Thursday to do it all over again. So uh, in the meantime, you guys trade safe. Use that checklist. Make sure that you've got a consistent approach to the markets, and that's going to help you have consistent results. All right, we'll talk to you then. Have a great one.